Welcome to my YouTube channel where we demonstrate and discuss everything related to theatrical and entertainment production crafts. Please subscribe to get the latest updates, posts, and demonstrations. While I will focus primarily on safety in the shops and comprehensive training and operating procedures for tools and machinery, I'll also demonstrate and discuss practical applications like flat and platform construction, scene painting, and more. If you'd like to see something specific, please let me know in the comments. Once again, please subscribe and power up the alert bell to get the most up-to-date notifications about new content. So how do you know what size drill bit to use for pre-drilling? Pre-drilling means drilling a hole in the wood so that the wood doesn't split or to help with a particular task. Some people say use an eighth inch drill bit or a sixteenth inch drill bit and just use that for all your pre-drilling. I'm going to suggest a slightly different way to pre-drill. The first thing we need to do is determine what size diameter the screw shank is. And we can see that it kind of fit, almost fits into one eighth. It fits into 964 with a little resistance and it fits into 530 seconds most easily. We're going to use either the 964 or the 530 seconds for our drilling. If I'm drilling in from this piece of wood into that piece of wood, I really only need to pre-drill into the first piece of wood because I want the screw to actually pass through the first piece of wood, but I want the screw threads to bite into the second piece of wood. If my two pieces of wood are stationed like this, I don't need to pre-drill into this piece. This piece is not going to split unless it's really dry. This piece, since you're so close to the end of the wood, this is where you're going to split. If I don't pre-drill here, this wood is going to split, split, split wherever I put the screw in. So this is the piece that you want to pre-drill. And you want to pre-drill so that you don't drill into this piece because you want the screw threads to have as much biting power as possible. The two methods that we're discussing is one to use an eighth inch or even a 16th inch drill bit and pre-drill both. And that works just fine, but I think the better way to pre-drill is to pre-drill a hole in this piece of wood so that the screw moves freely through this piece of wood. It doesn't need to bite into this piece of wood, it only needs to bite into that piece of wood. If it's not too big of a diameter, the head of this is going to compress the two pieces of wood together. You can take your other piece of wood and you can draw a line because our pine is three quarters of an inch and we should be shooting for that center point of the three quarter of an inch. That's where we want to be. We don't need to crowd the edge. We don't want to crowd the inside or we're going to miss our piece of wood. So I want to put a drill there. I want to put a drill there. And I want to put a drill there. I also don't need to crowd this outside edge. You need to keep the drill straight. You don't want to be going left and right. If you do that, and especially if the bit is smaller, or especially if you're using that 16th inch bit, if you get partway through and you shift slightly, you're going to break that bit all the time. I can go up to number two gear for drilling. Number two speed. We drill the other two holes. Now, if we've drilled them right, our drywall screw should slide right in through there. And that works real well. Which brings us to the next question of what is the correct size of drywall screw for what purpose? This is a one and five eighths inch drywall screw. It's a little more than one and a half of an inch. Five eighths is another eighth inch bigger than a half because half inch is four eighths and four eighths is smaller than five eighths. The general rule that I use is whatever material I'm going through, I need to use a screw that's at least twice as long. This is three quarter inch pine. I need to use at least one and a half inch size drywall screw. They don't make one and a half, they make one and five eighths. So I'm going to use one and five eighths because one and a quarter, the next size down, is too small. I barely have two or three threads that are going to grip and what they're going to do when I over screw it, when I over tighten it, is that's going to strip out and nothing's going to hold. You go bigger than one and five eighths, it's a little bit overkill for this operation. 
you'll be doing things like this a lot, putting a piece of pine against another piece of pine. You'll be using other tools to do this too, and pneumatic drivers and things. But if you're building a platform, you're gonna be using one by six and you're gonna be doing this exact task. You want to tighten it down until all that gap goes away. And you want to tighten it down until the screw is flush or slightly below the surface. You don't need to drive, drive the screw halfway through the piece of wood. But you see the head of this screw is much bigger than the hole that I drilled, and I only drilled the hole into the first piece, so it's gripping really nicely into the second piece. I'm going to straighten this out a little bit so that I can put in my second screw. The other thing before you put in the second screw is that you want to have this first screw really snug and fit. If it's not really snug and fit, what that, if there's a gap there, then this screw is going to lock that gap in place and the second screw is going to reinforce that gap. And you're never going to be able to close that gap because all the screws are holding the two pieces of wood apart. So when you put the first one in, make sure the gap is gone and make sure that everything else is snug. And then when I do the second one, I'm going to take up all the rest of the gap. and there's no gap. Excellent. And the last one. And my three screws are flush. If my screw isn't flush, go ahead and put some pressure into it. Make it slightly below the surface. That's starting to be almost too much. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time with more technical theater content.